Hello students, today our topic is redemption of preference shares. Let us understand what is the procedure for redemption of preference shares. Before going to the procedure, let us know what is preference share. See, preference share is a share which has got a preference in payment of their dividend and payment of their capital. Means, what is the preference that will be given to the preference share is See, we have two types of shares. One is equity share, other one is a preference share. See, equity share is one who has got a priority in getting a surplus profits, any amount of profit, and they have a voting right in electing the directors of a company. But the preference shares have got a preference in payment of dividend and payment of their capital prior to the equity shareholders. That means preference shareholders will get a fixed percentage of dividend in the company's profit and also they will get back their capital amount invested in the company at the time of liquidation or after the expiry of the tenure of the preference shares the company have to pay back their share capital amount to the investors of preference shareholders. So then what is the meaning of redemption of preference share? See, very simple, redemption is nothing but returning the preference share capital. Means, returning means what? Paying back. Say once if we have taken the preference share capital from the public, it is the duty, it is the responsibility of the company to pay back the preference share cap capital amount, whatever they have taken. That is what we call it as redeeming, means redemption, paying back, returning the preference share capital. Now, we have to understand the procedure for redemption of preference share. Say as usual, a company, a public company limited can issue these type of preference shares provided if they have mentioned in their articles of association. See what is articles is, it is a, a book of rules and regulations. In that book of rules and regulations of articles of association, if they have mentioned that they are eligible to issue the preference shares, only such companies can issue preference shares. And there is one more condition here, if you are issuing the preference shares, you can issue a maximum period of 20 years, not more than 20 years. Because all preference shares are redeemable preference shares provided the maximum period of 20 years and there is no irredeemable preference shares as of now. Before it was there, as of now, there is no irredeemable preference shares. All preference shares have to be redeemed maximum of 20 years. So this is actually a provision under section 55 of the Companies Act of 2013 it clearly says say what is the conditions is a preference share a public company can issue preference shares for a maximum period of 20 years this is the first condition the second condition is the preference shares when you want to redeem the preference shares all the preference shareholders have, should be paid fully paid that means completely the par value of the share has to be paid by the preference shares say for example if uh, 100 rupees is per share preference share and if 90 rupees has been paid and if the company is not yet called another 10 rupees by the time if the tenure the period is 20 years is get over then the company will call for the final call of 10 rupees once if the preference shares are paid, the 10 rupees to become fully paid, then only if they become a fully paid, these preference shares can be ready. See, this is what actually the provision under section 55 of the Companies Act of 2013 says. Now, let us come to the procedure for payment of these preference shares. What is the procedure? The procedure clearly tells in section 55 is the first section first one is whatever the amount of redeemable preference share capital that you are redeeming you have to pay out of the profits out of the profits means whatever the company earns the profit from that profits 
the company have to repay the preferential amount or preferential capital. See, in understanding this procedure, we need to understand two aspects in under section 55. What are the such two aspects is? Two aspects. One is called as legal aspect. Other one is a financial aspect. What is this legal, uh, uh, legal aspect? As per the law, as per the rule, you have to repay for preferential capital under section 55. I told you the company have to arrange for the payment of preferential capital legally which is prescribed by given the, as per the guidelines given by the company act. Now, what are the such guidelines that a company have to follow while redeeming the preference shares? First is, the company can redeem the preference share capital as capital portion as a capital portion through out of profit. What is out of profit? Out of profit means when the company earns the profit and taken a preference share capital and if the preference share capital tenure get over then the company need to redeem the preference shares then how they arrange in payment of the preference share capital. The preference share capital has to be paid out of the, out of the profits. Out of the profits is nothing but divisible profits. What is this divisible profits? What are the different types of divisible profits? I will explain to you. First one is general reserve. General reserve. Or you can say reserve fund also. Reserve fund also. Then uh, out of profit and loss account credit balance or surplus profits next is a dividend equalization fund dividend equalization fund out of employees compensation fund employees compensation fund and if any insurance fund or any debenture link fund. So, if any of these type of divisible profits available in the company from such, out of such divisible profits, the company can pay off the preference share capital portion. Preference share capital portion. Now, let us understand what happens if the out of profits or from the divisible profits, if the sufficient amount is not available in payment of capital of the preference shares. Now, we can go with, go ahead with the one more option that is called as fresh issue of shares. Fresh issue of shares. What is this fresh issue of shares? I will give you an example. Say for example, if uh, 10 lakh rupees is the capital that uh, a company need to redeem the preferred shares. Now, the available amount of divisible profit is 10 lakhs. If the amount of divisible profits is 10 lakhs, there is no need of issuing freshly fresh shares in order to redeem the preferred shares. Suppose if the divisible profits available is only 7 lakhs, then we need to, the company need to raise another 3 lakh rupees of fresh issue of shares in order to repay the preference share capital. So that means we will check with the availability of the divisible profit. In case if the availability of the divisible profit is not sufficient, then we can go for issue of 
shares freshly to the public in order to generate the capital to pay off the preferential capital. So this is uh, out of uh, for capital we issue out of profit and out of fresh issue. Okay, see this is a, a, a an introduction part or a, uh, what we call it as a basic part of the understanding the preferential capital or redeemable preferential capital. Now let us understand what are the reserves which are not eligible for which are not eligible for using the redeeming the preferential capital. There are certain reserves which we cannot utilize. Say what are these such a reserves is first one is a security premium. What is this? Security premium. You can never ever use security premium in payment of capital portion of the preference. Capital portion of the preferential capital. Second one is capital reserves. Say you can never use the capital reserve. What is capital reserve exactly is the profits made out of the purchase or sale of a capital asset. So such profit will be transferred to the capital reserve and which is not made out of the profits, regular profits of the company. So therefore, we never use the capital reserve for the payment of capital portion of the preference share. And the third one is development rebate reserve. Development rebate reserve. See, this reserve we cannot use it and uh, Profit prior to incorporation. Profit prior to incorporation. See, these are the sum of the okay reserves which we cannot use it for redemption of preferential capital for the capital portion. All we got it now. We'll get uh, back get get an understanding of uh, one more topic. That is, what happens if the preference redeemable preferences are payable at premium. That means when we are taking accepting the preferential capital at the time of issue of share capital, the company is promised them to pay at premium that is more than the face value. Say we have taken 10 lakh rupees from the preference shareholders. We have promised them at the time of redemption if we have promised them to pay 10% extra as a premium then we need to arrange even money for re redemption premium for the redemption premium portion. See, we have clearly given for the capital portion, we can arrange for payment of preferential capital through out of profits of the company. If out of profit is not sufficient, then we can go for fresh issue of shares. Suppose if the redeemable preferentials are payable at premium at the end of the tenure, then we have to arrange even payment of redemption premium also we need to arrange. Then how do we pay this redemption premium? See, redemption premium can be payable out of security premium. What is this? Security premium. If the security premium is not sufficient, then we can utilize out of profits. We can utilize the out of profits. That means, say 10 lakhs we have taken preferential capital amount. We need to pay back, we need to repay, redeem. When you want to redeem for 10 lakh rupees capital portion, we arrange out of profit. If it is not sufficient, we are going with fresh issue. Now, when you have promised them to pay premium at the time of redemption, then this redemption premium need to be arranged how we need to pay, how we have to pay. See, we can pay the redemption premium through by security premium. See, there may be two types of uh, security premium available in the company. One is old security premium. Other one is a new security premium. What is this old security premium? If already the company is having a security premium. See, the, the uh, reserves which cannot be utilized for payment of capital in that first one is security premium. This security premium we cannot utilize for the capital portion. 
but we can utilize for redemption premium. So this security premium we will we can use it for redemption premium. If suppose if the redemption premium is not sufficient, I will give an example. If we are paying at the ten percent premium, then ready redemption premium will be one lakh rupees, right? This one lakh rupees. Assume that if the old security premium available in the balance sheet is one lakh rupees, there is no need of worrying at all because we can utilize this security premium for redemption premium. What happens if it is seventy thousand rupees of a security premium is there? Now what we do is. However, here in my example, we have out of profit seven lakh rupees in payment of capital. We are arranging three lakh rupees for fresh issue. Say, for example, if a three lakh rupees of fresh issue of shares at ten rupees per share we are issuing, at a premium of one rupees if we are issuing, then we have to issue thirty thousand shares, right? If we issue thirty thousand shares for Face value of ten rupees, we'll get three lakh rupees. Three lakh plus seven lakh, we can pay off the capital. What happens if the fresh issue is made at ten percent premium or one rupee premium? See, on ten rupees, on ten rupees, ten percent will be how much? One rupee, right? So that means if I am issuing thirty thousand shares for premium of one rupee, I will get a, a premium, new premium of thirty thousand rupees. A new premium of thirty thousand rupees. Now, what happens here is seventy plus thirty, one lakh rupees. We can easily pay the redemption premium. This is how we can arrange for the redemption premium. Got it? See, once if you have a plan, how we can arrange for the payment of preferential capital towards the capital and towards the redemption premium, then only we can go ahead with the. The accounting procedure, because this is not given in your book or any textbook, but we need to understand because this is the legal aspect which, as per the rule given by the Companies Act of 2013, we have to follow. Now you may be having a one more question, sir. What happens if a world security premium we have only 60? Now 60,000 plus 30,000 only 90,000 rupees. But we need one lakh rupees for redemption premium. We are getting a shortage of ten thousand rupees. Now, how do how we can arrange? That is what. If in case if the security premium is not sufficient for arrangement of payment of redemption premium, we can use utilize out of profits. Say for example, if out of profit we have seven lakh ten thousand rupees in my example. Now since Seven lakh ten thousand. Here we are getting a ten thousand rupees of shortage, so I can utilize ten thousand rupees out of the profits, and now it becomes one lakh for redemption. And from this seven lakh ten thousand, ten thousand we are utilizing for redemption premium. So therefore, it comes to seven lakh rupees only. Now both redemption premium also we have arranged, and also payment of capital also we have arranged. So this is what the legal aspect and legal aspect as per the section 55. Now let us understand what is the finance aspect. See, once if you arrange for payment of capital and payment of redemption premium, now we need to arrange finance. See, arranging the finance also it is a biggest task for the company. Now how we arrange? Say every company will have. Some cash or a bank balance as a opening balance, right? Now let us say some opening balance we have, and company may have some investment. We can sell off the investments, or before that, if or any of the shareholder, either preference shareholders or equity shareholders, if they have paid partly. Say in our example, we'll take preference shares only. Say for example, out of ten lakh rupees, okay, fifty thousand people were not in paid. That means they the fifty thousand rupees was arrears in payment of the capital. That is calls in arrears. We may get calls in arrears money. Calls in arrears money. As I told you in the. 
principle under section 55, if you want to redeem any preferential capital, they have to be fully paid. If they are partly paid, then we call for the partly paid money and we receive call money also. Once if you receive the call money and calls in arrears money, we add up to the opening balance of cash and bank. Suppose if you issue any fresh issue of shares, fresh issue of shares or debentures, whatever it is a year, since uh, uh, 10 lakhs we need to pay, we arrange only 7 lakhs for out of profit, remaining 3 lakh rupees we are going for fresh issue. Now, when you issue the shares, you will get the money that is bank balance, that is fresh issue of shares. And if you have any investments and you can sell off such investment and pay off the, arrange for the money. You can arrange for the money for the payment or redemption of different shares. <coughs> Sir, all these are over. Say for example, we don't have any investment to sell, what to do? At the last option, we have even we can borrow the loan from the financial institutions also. That is borrowing of loan. Borrowing of loan. Say in all these uh, sources, we can raise the finance and with the help of this financial uh, arrangements what we made, we can pay off or we can redeem the preferential capital. See, this is a, a basic introduction part of the redemption of preferential capital. See, my dear students, when you want to understand redemption of preferential first you should know how we have to arrange for the payment of preferential capital. If you can arrange for payment of capital, we can arrange only with uh, two things. One is out of profit or either for fresh issue. Any one option, any option will be there or you can go with both options. If there is no out of profits, then we can go for a completely fresh issue of shares. If there is no fresh issue, but we have a sufficient amount of uh, profits available in the company, then there is no need to go for fresh issue. We can you go for payment of capital, arranging all such out of profits or divisible profits. Now, I will tell you one more very, very important point here. Whatever the profits you are arranging for the payment of capital, all such divisible profits, see, all such divisible profits should be transferred to an account called as capital reduction account. Sorry, capital redemption account. Capital redemption reserve. What, a, what reserve it is? Capital redemption reserve. Popularly we call it as CRR. So capital redemption reserve. Whatever the amount of divisible profits which you are arranging it for payment of preferential capital, all such divisible profits need to transfer to capital redemption reserve. Sir, why we have to transfer? What is the reason we need to transfer? See, if uh, you are not redeeming the preferences, all these divisible profits is available for payment of equity shareholders. Available to the payment of equity shareholders. Once if you are planning, arranging it for redemption of preferences, then the rule 55, section 55 says that you pay the redemption capital through out of profits. Through out of profits. That means once if you want to pay the redemption of preferences, you freeze all these reserves, all these divisible profits for the payment of redemption and such profits cannot be distributed to the equity shareholders in the form of cash. That means to say that once if you are arranged the all divisible profits for the payment of redemption portion, redemption of share capital portion, that means we will transfer to an account called as capital redemption reserve. Then what happens is this capital redemption reserve will not be available for distribution of dividends or profits to the shareholders, equity shareholders in the form of cash. In the form of cash because it lost its existence of divisible profits, it has become capital reduction reserve. 
you may ask a question sir what we do with this capital reduction reserve or capital redemption reserve we use this capital redemption reserve only for issue of bonus share only for issue of bonus share because there may be clash between equity and preference say equity says uh, sir entire uh, divisible profits you are arranged for payment of differential capital what is the benefit for us the equity shareholders may ask then the company says don't worry my dears we have a capital redemption reserve we will give you uh, an additional share a free bonus share we will give you without any cost see instead of giving them all divisible profits in the form of cash what we are giving we are paying in the form of bonus issues by utilizing this capital redemption reserve i hope all of you understood so this is the basic okay part of the introduction of this redemption of preference shares so we will understand in the next video how to pass the general entries and what are the general entries which we need required to pass okay